everybody. I am here with my step van siren and I really struggle with numbers. I struggle with numbers. I struggle with maths. Unwilling to be defeated, I refuse to give up. And this conflicts their uh, most RV shops uh, recreational gas installation tickets. Hmm, that's not a good sound. That sounds like a leak that I don't need bubbles to test for. Oh, it's so amazing. I'm gonna squeeze it all out and we'll get this beautiful poplar infused oil. And now I can use it to melt my beeswax to make my popper self. Yay! I am finally back into starting to think about build or what I want to do next in the van to move it along, to finish it off. I've, I have spent most of the morning working on my resume, working on job application stuff. Um, I have been unemployed now for a few months and spent most of those months traveling, which has been amazing. And I know that is a real privilege to be able to have the access to do that. Uh, now, it's kind of starting to get closer to crunch time and I need to get some work. So it's a little stressful, but I can't spend all the time doing that. Like my brain just physically would explode if I was doing that the whole time. So to give my brain a break, to take care of myself, I really have to focus on a few other things. I really, really want some more storage. Um, and I have a big space here under the counter over here which the fireplace is on that I could quite easily put another drawer to and I've just bought another sheet of plywood so I can build that but the sun is out you can just see it came out from behind a cloud and I need to maximize on the momentum and motivation to do that is the squarest thing that I have made ever most precise and it's still not the same square so you saw me doing all of my lovely measurements and I've now built this damn drawer and we've clearance for one drawer slide on the other side on this side, nada. I really struggle with numbers. I struggle with numbers. I struggle with maths. I grew up with uh, metric and most tape measures here are imperial and look at everything I've built and it boggles my mind how I did it. I have just started again with getting into building stuff and I'm feeling real disheartened. Unfortunately from here my microphone on my camera died. Unwilling to be defeated I refused to give up. I chiseled out a channel for the second draw slide to fit. There is indeed ways of overcoming one's own mistakes in order to make something work.
I also believe that if something doesn't come naturally to you, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try it. Not all brains work the same, so conventional learning doesn't work for everybody. Being able to tackle a project, find out ways of understanding, learning, and being able to make things work, succeed, and constantly improve is all I strive for. I will indeed master something, but my trajectory may not look the same as everybody else's, and neither might yours. Hi everybody, I am here with my step van siren and in some previous videos, I'm gonna put a link up here, I rigged up my propane system to my oven. Now, I tested it only. It has not been installed permanently and I've just been away to New Zealand and Australia, so I didn't do it permanently before I left. And now I'm going to start the permanent installation. Inside here, I have a full domestic oven and this conflicts their uh, most RV shops uh, recreational gas installation tickets. So in order to work around this system, I did it myself. The very first thing I have to do is see those yellow blocks there. I have to jack up the front of the van so I can actually crawl underneath. I will be able to, from the propane locker on this side of the van, run the hose underneath. And I have gotten some special foam tubing to protect it. So let's get started. And this tank, which has these extra braces, so that it's gonna sit nicely in here and the holes are already pre-drilled. So I think that's gonna be the first job because I've actually already got the bolts. And this beautiful tank has this gorgeous corner so that it doesn't interfere behind here. Isn't that really neat? Got a really nice big long hose, which is awesome. <laughs> a really long stick. Okay, so you can see some pretty nice holes here that line up to mount the tank, which is great. And then I have some bolts, washers. So I've got that here and a spanner for doing this up. Super long propane hose. All right. Is all insulated. The next job is to put that through that hole but I think I have to start with the other end because this bit is too big to fit through that hole this little tank is amazing because it's got a fuller empty gauge which is awesome Before I pull the oven out and connect it, we've got these zap straps that I have to run the pipe under the van, avoiding things like hot mufflers and attaching it specifically to the chassis where there is less heat. It's not gonna melt anything, protect it. All right, so now is the dirty bit. I have to climb under the van. Wish me luck. So, here we have, this is the main chassis bar that runs across the van. I'm gonna trim that, but it's now attached. So it is protected from this muffler. And then all it needs to do is run around here and connect to there. So we actually have extra pipe, but plenty of space for it to be stashed up here. I 
have a cup of water here. It's in a copper glass that blends in with the leaves. It's right there. Anyway, next is bubble test. Check for leaks. So I'm just gonna go around the other side of the van and turn it on. Hmm, that's not a good sound. That sounds like a leak that I don't need bubbles to test for. Hi. So, I should probably put you this way so you're not sideways. I'm gonna try that again. I've disconnected it, cleaned it again, reconnected it. Tightened it. Let's see what happens next. One more go of me getting under here and putting dust in my face. Okay. <laughs> oh, no hissing. That's a bonus. I think it's time to pull the oven out. And you know those mouses I was getting rid of? Well, this is where they're living. Look at all of this crap. And I'm gonna try and climb in there now and clean it all out and pull my hose through. I'm gonna put a piece of wire wool in there so that no more mice will ever get in. <laughs> Vacuum, I've cleaned all of this out. Time to turn the switch on. Hmm, <sighs> it was nice and warm in here. I've had the fire on for a little while. Over here. Some hot water to make some tea. And I just warmed up the soup. I canned over winter some butternut squash soup in this jar. And it was so good. It stored beautifully. And I was able to just pop it in this pot and warm it all up. And I make it really thick. So it's more like concentrate. And then I've also roasted an onion. A little difficult to see there, but yeah delicious roast onion to make some stock to add to that. The next thing I'm going to do is process some of these um, poplar buds. I have, these have been sitting in oil for over a year so I need to stir them up and then add beeswax. I don't think this is going to be enough beeswax but I'm going to see. We're gonna see. So I have to get a muslin cloth, strain out all the poplar buds so that it's just the oil which smells like cottonwood. It's so good. Poplar self is so good for wounds. It's antibacterial. It's really great for moisturizing. Some people use it as like beard or hair conditioner. So I'm gonna make some and it's gonna be great because I collected a whole lot of poplar buds and it's almost time to collect poplar buds again this season so best to make up last year's batch. I'm not entirely sure I have enough beeswax so we'll make this up and see how we go. Cheesecloth! And I'm gonna leave my sticker box and postage stuff out because I have to make a mail run to send off I think three new sets of stickers for the three patrons who just rejoined or joined my Patreon this week. So thank you so much if you've recently joined. Your stickers will be in the mail very soon. This will be what we strain the poplar buds through to get all of the oil out. It smells Amazing.
And see this beautiful golden oil. Oh, it's so amazing. I'm going to squeeze it all out and we'll get this beautiful poplar infused oil. Wow. My fingers trip. My hands are just covered in poplar oil. <laughs> I think I'm gonna actually put it in my hair. Because it's very good for you. And curls love a little oil. And then I'll wash the rest off. It's just olive oil and poplar salve. stove working and now I can use it to melt my beeswax to make my popper self yay I've great this great hunking big chunk of pop uh, beeswax and I have now strained off most of the oil so I'm going to be melting and combining these in uh, a ratio and I'm gonna tell you the ratio hang on let's look it up ratio is one ounce of beeswax for 28 grams which one ounce of beeswax which is 28 grams to one cup of oil I might get another jar and put one cup of water in it and compare the two heights Okay, not quite a cup. Here we go, it's all evaporating. So, this will go in there too once the wax is melted. And this little double boiler. So happy with how this is coming along to be able to do this finally on my own stove boil over is a really big deal I'm very excited yes I should probably go turn that on Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a big thumbs up and, the, and hit the notification bell. That way you'll always hear about my videos when they come out. I'll see you all next week for an exciting adventure with somebody you might know.